Welcome to Mikun's Hardware. In this video I'm going to take a look at yet another interesting Intel Xeon E5 CPU. I have already tested Xeon E5 2640v3, Xeon E5 2650v3, and now it's time to take a look at Xeon E5 2660v3. Let's start with a specification comparison. Xeon E5 2640v3 is an 8-core CPU with 16 threads. Its frequency is fluctuating between 2.6 and 3.4 GHz, but if you unlock Turbo Boost, frequency on all cores will be 3.4 GHz. This CPU supports DDR4-1866 memory configuration, 90W TDP limit, 20 MB cache, and currently you can find it on AliExpress for 60 to 65 euros. Xeon E5 2650v3 has 10 cores, 20 threads, 2.3 to 3.0 GHz frequency speed, supports DDR4 2133, 105 watts TDP limit, 25 megabytes cache, available on AliExpress for 55 to 60 euros. And Xeon E5 2660v3, which is focus of today's video, also has 10 cores and 20 threads, but its frequency is 300 MHz higher. 2.6 to 3.3 GHz. Unfortunately, TDP limit is also 105 watts. CPU cache also does not have any changes. 25 megabytes. Still, the price is significantly higher. On AliExpress, it's available for 75-80 euros. All CPUs were tested with the Turbo Boost Unlock on Chinese Clisra X99 D8 motherboard. With usage of 32GB crucial DDR4 2400 ECC registered memory in 4 sticks configuration. Thus, all configurations were tested with quad-channel configuration, 8GB on each channel. For the GPU I have used my MSI RTX 2070 Super, Samsung 850 Pro 512GB as a system drive, and EVGA Supernova 750 G2 as the power supply. To make this comparison a bit more interesting, I have also tested Xeon E5 2660v3 on a branded MSI X99 ASLI Plus motherboard with a slight overclock using BCLK and the memory controller. Detailed timings configuration for each CPU test that you can see on your screen. In short, E5 2640 was using DDR4 1866 CL11, 2650 DDR4 2133 CL12. 2660 on Clisray motherboard DDR4-2133 CL12 and on MSI X99A DDR4-2133 CL11. Let's start our comparison with the CPUs out. Single core performance is almost identical between all the CPUs because their frequency is very similar. Still, overclocked E5-2660 is taking the first place with 389 points. The second place goes to 2640, 376 points. The third place goes to 2660 without overclock 370 points, and the last place is taken by 2650 with 336 points. When using all CPU cores, the first two places are taken by 2660, 4900 points with overclock and 4600 points without overclock. The third place goes to 2650, 4200 points, and the last place is taken by 2640 which has 3700 points with its 8 cores. Cinebench R15 and R20 results are almost identical to CPU Z Multi's core performance. Overclock 2660 is taking the first place. The second place also goes to 2660 but without overclock. The third place goes to 2650. And the last place is taken by 2640 which has two less cores compared to other two CPUs tested. Ada64 memory test is showing quite identical results. Still there are two things to mention. Overclock 2660 on MSI X99A showing the best result. Because I was able to increase memory voltage to 135V, I was able to tighten the memory timings to DDR4-2133 CL11, thus the memory latency is the best, just 64 nanoseconds. E5-2640 on Clisra X99D8 is showing the best latency result, 69 nanoseconds. But this CPU is limited to DDR4-1866, that's why memory read and copy is slightly worse compared to DDR4-2133. If you're interested in the detailed numbers, put the video on pause and take a look. Now let's move to some real tasks. Handbrake video encoding and DaVinci Resolve video rendering. In this case I render one of my YouTube videos using DaVinci Resolve in 4K resolution. After that I use Handbrake to encode the video to 1440p to upload to YouTube. Even though 2640 has 8 cores and 2650 has 10 cores, they are showing very similar results. 
37 minutes for handbrake video encoding and 34 minutes for DaVinci Resolve video rendering. In handbrake E5 2640 was slightly faster, in DaVinci Resolve E5 2640 was slightly slower. 2660 on the other hand was able to reduce the time to 34 minutes in handbrake and 31 minutes in DaVinci Resolve. Overclocking the CPU reduces the time to complete even further, 33 minutes in handbrake and 29 minutes in DaVinci Resolve. Overall the difference between 2640 and overclocked 2660 is not that big. In handbrake it's 37 minutes against 33 minutes, in DaVinci Resolve it's 35 minutes against 30 minutes, which is about 5 to 10 percent. MetaTrader 5 Financial Calculations This application can efficiently utilize up to 32 CPU cores, those 10 core CPUs are 100% utilized. Overclock 2660 completed the calculations in 1 hour 43 minutes. Without overclock the CPU completes the task in 1 hour 52 minutes. It seems like MetaTrader 5 is heavily dependent on CPU frequency as well as memory frequency and memory latency. That's why overclocking 2660 gives about 10% extra performance. 2650 completes the task in 1 hour 59 minutes and 2640 with just 8 cores completes the task in 2 hours and 12 minutes. The difference between the best result of overclock 2660, 1 hour 43 minutes, and the slowest result of 2640, 2 hours 12 minutes is quite substantial. Thus if you are using MetaTrader 5 for financial calculations, paying extra for 2660 over 2640 makes perfect sense. Otherwise 2650 seems to be the best value option. Fritz Chess Benchmark this old benchmark can use only up to 16 CPU threads, that's why 2650 with its 3GHz turbo speed takes the last place. The other results are almost identical. 2660 without overclock is slightly losing to 2640, while overclock 2660 shows slightly better result than 2640. Now let's take a look at some games. The first one is Red Dead Redemption 2. It was tested at 1080p with balanced preset and Vulkan API. The results are almost identical between all of the CPUs, still E5 2650 shows the worst result. Only 72 FPS on minimum and 99 FPS on average. All other CPUs manage to get 100 FPS on average and about 78 minimum FPS. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The game was tested at 1080p with Ultra Graphics preset, DirectX 12 API. Here we once again see the 2650 is taking the last place having just 79 minimum FPS when CPU bound. Average FPS stays at 110, while 2640 and 2660 having 90 minimum FPS when CPU bound and 113 FPS on average. Overclocking E5 2660 gives slightly better result. Minimum 95 FPS when limited by CPU and 119 FPS on average. The difference is not that significant, but it seems like tuning the memory and reducing the memory latency is giving a nice bump in this game. F1 2019. The game was tested at 1080p, ultra graphical preset, DirectX 12 API. 2650 with its 3 GHz turbo speed is once again taking the last place. 129 FPS 1% low, 160 FPS on average. The second last place goes to 2660, 134 FPS 1% low, 167 FPS on average. 2640 increases the values to 137 FPS 1% low and 171 FPS on average, and overclock 2660 is increasing even more to 140 FPS 1% low and 174 FPS on average. The difference between the best and the worst result is more than 10 FPS, which is on one side very significant, on the other side is not that significant if you consider the price difference. Battlefield 5 1080p Ultra Graphical Preset DirectX 11 API. In this game 2650 struggles a lot. With just 3 GHz turbo frequency speed, 0.1% low FPS are miserable, just 20 FPS. 1% low though on the 11, 112 FPS, averages goes to 164. The second worst place goes to 2640, 64 0.1% low FPS, 113 1% low and 168 averages. 2660 with and without overclock takes the first and the second place. Without overclock, 70 FPS 0.1% low, 120 FPS 1% low and 169 FPS on average. With overclock the values are slightly higher. 
71 FPS 0.1%, 124 FPS 1% low, and 175 FPS on average. Looking at this result, I can make a conclusion that if you are playing fast-paced FPS shooters such as Battlefield 5, Call of Duty or something like that, E5 2650 is not the best CPU you should pick. 2640 and 2660 will do just fine. City Skylines – yet another game where 2650 struggles a lot. Just 7.1% low FPS, 21 1% low and 44 on average. 2640 increases the value to 13.1% low FPS, 23 1% low and 44 on average. While 2660 with and without overclock shows almost identical results, 20.1% low FPS, 23 and 25 1% low FPS, 45 and 46 on average. Astroneer is not a very optimized game, but it seems like it's very memory bandwidth and memory latency limited. Here overclock 2660 is showing the best result, 20.1% low FPS, while all the other configurations have just 17, 43 1% low FPS, while 2640 and 2660 without overclock have 40 FPS 1% low, and 97 FPS on average while 2640 and 2660 have just 90 FPS on average. 2650 is once again at the bottom of the chart, having 17 FPS 0.1% low, 38 FPS 1% low and just 82 FPS on average. One more proof that 2650 is not a gaming CPU, while 2640 is a better value CPU than 2660. Both of them will do just fine for gaming. Cosex 3. This game uses maximum 1.5 CPU cores, thus the performance between all of the CPUs is almost identical. Nevertheless, 2650 shows the worst result, while Overclock 2660 shows the best result. The difference is just a few FPS though. Now let's take a look at relative performance on all of the configurations tested. E5 2640v3 results were taken as 100%, every other value was calculated from there while 2650 shows 103% performance compared to 2640 in working tasks and synthetic benchmarks, it delivers only 90% of gaming performance. 2660 delivers 112% performance in working tasks and 103% performance in gaming. If you overclock the CPU on a branded motherboard, such as MSI X99A, you will get 117% performance in working tasks and just 104% in games. Combining these two scores, we see that 2650 is 3% slower than 2640, 2660 is 8% faster than 2640, and Overclock 2660 is 11% faster than 2640. I'm not going to show price versus performance comparison, because lately prices are going up and down. For myself, if I would have some extra money, I would take 2660, otherwise 2640 is the best option. 2650 is a very nice CPU, but only if your main focus is working kind of tasks and you are not gaming that often. If you are looking for a CPU for a gaming computer, then I would strongly suggest not to go for 2650. With this comparison I have tested and compared almost every interesting Xeon E5 V3 CPU, still there is E5 2690 V3, which is a 12-core CPU with a slightly higher turbo frequency compared to E5 2678 V3, which I also plan to test and validate and see if these extra 300 MHz will bring significant performance advantage compared to E5 2678 V3. But for now that's all I have for you. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, goodbye.